We have integrations with Langchain as well as with Llama Index, which really allows the developers that are building an application to using those tools to easily chunk data, create vectors on that data, and allow them to store that data within Couchbase in a very easy way. Hi, this is Yosef Limpartia and welcome to TFL Let's Talk. Today we have with us Scott Anderson, SVP of Product Management at Couchbase, Scott, it's great to have you on the show. Great to be here and excited to have this conversation. Of course, we are going to discuss uh, the news announcement that you folks made recently. So let's just jump into this topic quickly. Uh, talk about what you folks announced. This week, we are announcing the introduction of Vector Search as part of our overall platform. Um, and that vector search capability allows customers to be able to store uh, multiple vectors within a single JSON document as part of our data store, and then leveraging our enhanced search capability to be able to create vectorized indexes uh, using search, which support things like AI as well as hybrid search overall. Uh, in addition to doing that within Couchbase Server, we're really excited to be introducing this also to our edge so solution, Couchbase Mobile, which allows data to be synchronized uh, from Couchbase server down to devices, be it IoT, phones, and iPads, and the ability to run that um, those search activities on the device itself. When we look at Couchbase, when we look at this announcement, the word has evolved. We now live in totally cloud-centric world, and soon we'll say, hey, we live in now generative AI world. So talk a bit about how Couchbase has evolved, uh, because when we look at some of the of these offering, it is also where the customers are in their journey, where the industry is in the journey, that's where the Couchbase is. We've really evolved our platform since we were created, uh, really being a cache, and then extending that to KV access of the documents. And over the years, we've continued to enhance the platform with multiple access me methods, starting with query and the introduction of SQL++, which is our SQL compatible query language that's optimized for JSON. Uh, once we did that from an access pattern, we added capabilities like full text search, analytical capabilities and eventing service. And in the middle of that journey, we invested heavily in mobile. Uh, and this was about eight, eight years ago, the ability to be able to sync data from the cloud down to the device, even and be able to perform access patterns on that device, irrespective if there was network connectivity. Uh, and that's been very popular in field services and retail applications itself. So we've really uh, evolved the platform to be a full multi-model database supporting anything from caching to KV to time series, uh, to graph capabilities, which are coming with our upcoming 7.6 release, which will be uh, available next month in the marketplace. And then finally, as we mentioned earlier, adding vector capability, which is critically important to support functionality like hybrid search as well as RAG is part of the overall infrastructure that Couchbase can provide. Talk a bit about uh, the impact of Gen AI on search in general and then vector search and Let's look at it from a developer's point of view that, you know, how this kind of supports them as they are building their applications. So maybe I'll take a little bit of a step back and, and talk a little bit of Gen AI and how we use that in Couchbase Capella, which is our database as a service. Earlier this year, we announced general availability of Capella IQ, which is our chatbot, which allows a developer using Capella to interact with the systems using natural language, the ability to create data uh, and the ability to create specific indexes to be able to write specific SQL queries based off of a, a natural language interface and be able to get code output that could be applicable for the favorite SDK that they're gonna use, Node.js or Java and so forth. We further extended that uh, with integration into IDEs like IntelliJ that allows people when they're using their IDE and they have an auth authentication into Capella that they can directly access IQ from their IDE. So those are the, some of the things that we've done to really improve developer productivity to speed up their knowledge in Couchbase itself. Now, if I look at vector search specifically, and we look at an example of being able to do a hybrid search query. So let's say, for example, there's a favorite color, color blue that I have, um, and I'm looking for a pair of shoes to match that color blue. 
uh, the ability to load that image into the application, um, have the image create an embedding or vector for that, and then be able to store that within Couchbase and index that is incredibly valuable. Now, if I'm running a search query as an end user trying to find out those shoes, um, I want this color blue, which is doing vectorized search. Um, I'm doing Kiwi, keyword search potentially on that and maybe doing a range search in terms of size or the rating for that combined with the geospatial search of I want to find a store within 15 miles of my house who has that product. Um, and finally, I want to be able to check the inventory of each one of those stores that are in that 15 mile radius so that when I decide to show up to the store to get those shoes, I know it's the right color, the right size and the right price point. It's highly rated, and most importantly, it's available for me to go ahead and purchase that. Um, and that's a, the power of hybrid search in terms of the ability to give um, much better results to the end user of the application, in this case, in a real t retail setting, which increases my propensity to buy, which is what retail outlets are doing. Uh, so that really unlocks things from a developer standpoint because you're doing really a single query into Couchbase that can pull or, or leverage those multiple access patterns to get a very specific answer based off the context that the user is providing. When you talk about edge, actually you did touch upon that, but edge as computing, the lines are kind of, they get blurred depending on who you talk to. Edge could also mean tiny devices on remote. Edge could also mean bringing a data center closer to user, you know? So, so when you talk about edge, what do you mean? And what are the benefits of bringing vector search to the edge? So when I was speaking previously about edge, I was really talking about the end device, right? Um, there's also things like edge zones and bringing data centers uh, closer to that. But when I think about the power of bringing vector search into, let's say, a mobile device and an application that served on that, and you can think of a couple of examples of that. Um, let's say I'm doing maintenance on you know some sort of machine that may be in a remote location um, and the ability for me to let's say take a picture of that machine it's not working um, using the local embedding on the device itself to vectorize that and let's say i have a known set of pictures that have all been vectorized that correspond to what the issue is you know is there a crack here and how do i identify that if I can do that locally in a remote setting where I don't have con connectivity back to the cloud to go ahead and perform that, so think of remote field service for an example, I can get a prescriptive uh, answer to the problem or what would be the potential remediation of that problem itself. You could also see that within a retail setting where you're trying to reduce the amount of network transfer or data going back into the cloud. And if I can locally process that on the device, it's really, really interesting. When you look at this announcement, um, how does this differentiate couch basis, you know, capabilities from what other players are doing? There are some, what I would say, single purpose databases that uh, have popped up in the industry that are specific to vector search. Like other database providers, we've integrated this capability within a broader data platform, which we think is really, really important. Um, it's allowing you one access point to be able to get your data versus multiple access points. You're reducing latency of data. Um, you may be storing data in our KV store and the ability to rapidly index that information as new mutations and changes occur. That's the benefit of a platform approach. I would say a couple of other key points of differentiation is SQL++, which is our query language that allows you to interact with a, uh, based off of a SQL standard that is very easy for people who are familiar with the relational databases and standard SQL to be able to take that to a JSON-oriented database like Couchbase itself. Um, and that ability to combine within a single statement as the example I gave before is incredibly powerful from a developer productivity. The other thing that we've done is because this is in our core software platform is customers have deployment flexibility. If they want to self-manage this environment, be it in the cloud, uh, be it on-prem or hybrid solution, this capability is available for them, as well as if they want to consume Couchbase delivered as a service. So that's Capella, our fully managed database as a service. We're providing customers with choice, which some vendors actually do not. 
And then finally, as we spoke about previously, being able to take that down to the device level at the edge or that endpoint level to be able to do local processing, um, we believe is very unique in the marketplace today. You folks also added to the uh, column in our uh, capabilities. Uh, let's just look at real-time data analysis and vector search. You know, once again, on the platform, what benefit it brings to the teams? We announced at AWS reInvent at the end of November uh, the introduction of a private preview for our new Columnar service, uh, which is really about real-time data processing of information in Couchbase. So the ability to take data from a single Couchbase cluster or multiple clusters of Couchbase and to be able to rapidly ingest that data and convert that into a Columnar format in an automated fashion, really removing ETL processing of that data. In addition to that, the Columnar store, you can stream data into that using Kafka from multiple data sources, which gives you a much broader data repository to perform real-time and historical analytics. And one of the key things that we've done with our Columnar store is not only being able to create that aggregation or calculation in the Columnar store, but what do you do with that? So the ability to write back into our KV store, which can serve millions of operations per second, at a high level of concurrency at low latency is incredibly powerful solution. So as we see the world evolving from this combination of having an operational data store, uh, which can serve, as I said before, low latency, high concurrency requests with a columnar store that can do very, very complex calculations um, and have that isolated so there's no noisy neighbor problem between those two solutions and having a direct connection that's bi-directional is very unique to be able to serve real-time analytical data, be you know machine learning calculations and so forth, back to the application where it's most useful. And can you talk about what kind of use cases are you targeting or what are the use cases that can benefit from this? If I look specifically at Columnar, it's been really interesting through the private preview process and the customers that we've spoken with and the use cases. And some of them are, are solving kind of a, a problem that's been around for a long time. So we've talked to a number of customers who store data in JSON today. Um, they're ETLing that data and converting that data, in many cases, flattening the arrays uh, that can be very robust in a JSON document to put it into a relational oriented analytical engine. Then they're doing the calculations and getting the output, and they're having to reverse ETL that data back into JSON. So if you think about that process, it's relatively fragile. Um, is an application owner and the owner of the JSON data store, and I spoke to one of our customers about this, one of the great um, advantages of JSON is it's a flexible data schema, and that's why people love JSON. But if you're connected into an ETL process and doing relational-oriented analytics, you're removing some of that flexibility away because if you make changes in terms of fields and values, you can break that ETL pipeline. So the ability to do all of this natively within JSON does a couple of things. One is it removes complexity and data processing, and that can be multiple steps of data processing within that and maintaining that pipeline, which can be fragile and doesn't really it doesn't really work with a lot of uh, changes going on in the in the data format itself. The other thing is the latency of the data. That processing takes time. You're moving data from one system to another, processing the data and bringing that back. So your data is not as fresh in that analytics. You're putting latency into that data, which is complex. And so the conversations I've had with our customers and what's really exciting them about this Columnar service is first being able to do everything native within JSON. The fact that we convert that JSON automatically into a Columnar format, and with Columnar, they get the benefits of compression and so forth, so they can store data at a lower total cost of ownership. And then finally, having that isolation between the operational data store and the columnar store means there's no na noisy neighbor in processing, but we preserve that connection of data, um, which speeds up or reduces the latency of data when you're performing that analytics and then getting it back in real time into the application. In the last few years, we focused so much on DevOps that we almost forgot about developers, right? Now we have started talking about uh, bringing back the developer experience. Can you also talk about uh, with this capability is how the application development itself is kind of evolving, adopting? 
Yeah, I think, and how do folks enable that? One of the things that we've done as part of our of our uh, announcement is we have integrations with Langchain as well as with Llama Index, which really allows the developers that are building an application to using those tools to easily chunk data, create vectors on that data, and allow them to store that data within Couchbase in a very easy way. And I think as, as AI becomes adopted, if we look back, let's say, three, five years ago, or even a couple years ago before the introduction of, of ChatGPT, the world of AI was pretty isolated in terms of the developers who are working on that. And I think as you commented earlier, we're in this next wave of technology and it's going to be broadly adopted across developers and various levels of experience. And so I think it's critically important and it's a critical focus of Couchbase is how do we make that experience as easy as possible? And our view is we need to integrate into the broader ecosystem. And those two integrations are just two proof points of what we're doing with developers. How do we increase productivity? So how do we remove steps? How do we take the burden as a vendor to allow them to innovate and build that next generation of application as quickly as possible? And that's a key focus that we have today and obviously going forward. Scott, thank you so much for taking time out today. To talk about this announcement, talk about the larger picture where the world is moving with Trinity AI and how Couchbase is helping developers, customers in their journey. Thanks for all those great insights. And I would love to chat with you again. Let's make sure that there's not that much gap between our discussions. But I really appreciate your time today. Thank you. Absolutely. Look forward to, uh, really appreciate it today and look forward to future conversations with you as we have more exciting announcements coming uh, throughout the year.